another striking testimony about Titan. He had the teaching and he put it to work and God favored, favored him and stagnation of many years was destroyed. See, you don't know what you are missing if you are not Titan. Is a covenant requirement. 10%, 10%, just give God 10 and keep the 90. And he said he will open the windows of heaven over you to the point that you will not be able to receive them. There will not be room enough for you to receive. But many here we are, we are saying, no, Lord, that 10% is too much. That 10%, Lord, remember I have bills. Naturally, in this part of the world, your employer, do they consult you before they calculate your tax? Huh? But God is saying, okay, take all. Okay, just give me 10% out of it. Just give me 10%. Okay, take 10. Give me one. And we are murmuring, complaining. But I pray that anyone such like that under the sound of my voice, God will show you mercy today in the name of Jesus Christ. As you reverse, as you plug into the mystery of Titan, I see the windows of God opening over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. For academic success, this can only be God. This can only be God. This can only be God. And our brother testified that he emerged as the best of the best. The best of the best. In spite of the situation surrounding his, I mean, academics uh, journey. At the beginning, the first, I mean, uh, exam he's had for, it was failed, failed, absolutely failed. Down the line again, his sister, she passed on to glory. That was even enough to discourage him. But God kept him going, going and going. And at the end, he emerged as the best. I decree over every student in the house this morning, the same God that helped him, I decree that that same God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall emerge as the best of the best in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall become a reference point, a positive one in the name of Jesus Christ. Those testimonies, they are all amazing for gift of life. For gift of life. I, I think our God deserves all the praise. That clapping can be better if you are clapping for Jesus. To God alone be all the glory. That we have not run out of testimonies in this church. There's no famine of testimonies. I think about two or three Sundays ago, a sister testified about immigration breakthrough. And after the service, before I got home, just a few minutes even after the service, someone called me to say, Pastor, I received an email from home office, exactly 11.36. 11.36, we're still in service, 11.36. God is out there putting someone under pressure to approve someone's immigration settlement. Our God is a faithful God. He's a faithful God. In your sister position, please help me lift up your hand and sincerely appreciate God and thank him. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all our praise. To him alone be all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. And I pray that anyone here that is trusting God for any kind of testimony, I pray that the same God that did it for them, that same God will visit you today in the name of Jesus Christ. He said he's not a respecter of person. What he has done for one, he can do for another. He's not a partial God. I decree, I stand in the shoulders of my father, Bishop Tudoripo. I decree that all the testimonies you are trusting God for, for fruit of the womb, for immigration breakthrough, for career breakthrough, receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And also yesterday we had a wonderful time uh, in our various WSF centers. It was our law office. We had a wonderful time. And I was privileged to visit two of the centers. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. It was so an awesome time, a refreshing time. I, I fellowship with uh, uh, some of them and uh, it was a wonderful time. And I believe we all had a wonderful time in our various WSF centers, isn't it? And I see God putting us together as one joining us together with his love in our heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Straight into the word of God this morning, we'll be looking at this teaching series, rather a teaching which is uh, for today only. It is captioned as engaging the power of praise 
for fulfillment of prophecies. Engaging the power of praise for fulfillment of prophecies. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 54, 1 to 3. Sing, O barren. Thou hast didst not bear. Break forth in singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the world. Of the married wife, said the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for someone this morning. God is saying that you should sing. No matter your situation, God is saying to someone, sing. No matter how your situation may look ugly, no matter how it may look worrying, no matter how it may look, God is saying, sing. Oh, barren, sing. Concerning your career, maybe things are not going well, things are not going right for you. The Bible is saying, God is saying to someone, sing. And look at it, what he said in verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Until singing goes forth, there is no enlargement. Until singing goes forth, there is no enlargement. And let them stretch forth their curtains of thy, what? thy habitation. Spear not. Let thy courts and strengthen thy stakes. The next verse now. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate city to be inhabited. There is power in praise. There is power in singing. Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. As we plug into singing today, I see God turning your story around in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter how that situation may look like, I see God reversing it in the name of Jesus Christ. As a way of introduction, every statement of scripture is defined as the more sure word of prophecy. Every statement of scripture is defined as the more sure word of prophecy. We can see that kind of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9 to 21. 2 Peter 1, and from verse 19 to 21. We have a more sure word of prophecy. The word of God is sure. The word of God is sure. The word of God is certain. The word of God stands. That's why he said that his word will not return back void unto him. That it must prosper in whatsoever he sent it to do. The word of God is a sure prophecy. It's a more sure prophecy. The Bible says even heaven and earth may be passing away, but even a jot out of his word will not go unfulfilled. What God said concerning you stands. No matter what you are passing through, no matter your circumstance, what God says is the final verdict. What God says is the final, is the final of the final. It's a more sure word of prophecy well unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men of god speak as they were moved by the Holy, by the Holy Ghost, the Bible—they are not man's idea. The Holy Spirit inspired holy men of God to document them, to write the Scriptures. It's for instance, I mean, for the sake of, I mean, a, 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 an example now. If you go to a village, maybe you have a, your great grandfather, maybe he is still alive. And he wants to communicate maybe with his son that is in the city. And being a very old man, he can't write. He will call a child, a younger fellow that can write. And he begin to tell him that, please, can you help me write this? Write that. Tell him that I missed him. Tell him that I look forward to seeing him during Christmas. 
blah 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 that's the same way it is the holy spirit speaks to holy men and the holy men they documented the scriptures and they package the scriptures for you and i and everything written here in the scriptures they are the prophetic words that has come from the mouth of god himself they are the prophetic word that has come out from the mouth of god himself isaiah chapter 34 verse 16 isaiah 34 and verse 16 isaiah 34 and verse 16 i would like us to read together want to go church seek ye None of the word of God shall fail. None shall want her mates. For my mouth it had commanded. And his spirit is what? It had gathered them. What God says is final. What God says concerning your career is final. He said you shall be the head and not the tail. He said you shall be above and not beneath. So you are to receive that word of God and believe it. You are a success, you are not a failure. You are fruitful, you are not barren. You are prosperous, you are not a poor person. No! As a redeemed child of God, you are ordained, you are redeemed to be prosperous. That's what the word of God says. God's prophetic agenda for the redeemed is as contained in the scriptures god's prophetic agenda for the redeemed and who is the redeemed who is the redeemed church are we cold huh? <laughs> god's prophetic agenda god's intention god's plan his divine plan they are all needed in the scriptures do you have your bible to this morning the bible is a more sure prophecy everything that pertains to your destiny is in the bible is documented here the bible speaking concerning you and i that as for me and my children we shall be for signs and wonders isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 so you don't need to worry about your son about your daughter all you need to keep holding on to is the word of god because the word of god cannot fail god cannot lie can god lie that's why he's God. The day God starts to lie, he's no more God. But God forbid, he can't lie. Can God fail? No, he can't. He speaks according to his capacity. Anytime he speaks, he has the capacity to back it up, to make it to happen. For instance, this microphone is black, isn't it? If God said it is white, it will change automatically. It will change. He has all it takes. That's why in the beginning he said, let there be light. After he even created the universe, the Bible said the earth was void. But he said, let there be light. And instantly everything come. Formation came to place. Everything began to add up. Everything began to adjust. The word of God stands for sure. It's not an honorary book. Your Bible is not an honorary book. You must cherish it. As you hold on to the word of God, I see God confirming his word in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly, let's go further. But what must we do to see this prophecy come to pass? What must we do? Number one is that you must receive it. Number two, you must believe it. Number three, you must put them to work. You must put them to work. You must receive it. Until you receive it, you cannot be empowered to become what you receive. John 1 12. John 1 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave it power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. That's where some believers are missing it. When God says something, believe it with all of your heart. Receive it and believe it. Receive it and believe it. Receive it and believe it. And also take steps. In accord, I mean, a, 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 a corresponding steps to make sure that those things you believe come to pass. 
God has said it, that anywhere the soul of your fish has stepped upon that he has given you for possession. You must believe it. Receive. You receive it first. As you receive it, believe it. And what? And run with it. And run with it. Unfortunately, many believers, they give up early on time. They are too much in a rush. They are Russians. Like we with believers. The Bible talking about Abraham. He waited for 25 years. The Bible says he staggered not. He held on to the word of God. He believed the word of God. He married the word of God. He joined himself with the word of God. And at the end, did Isaac come or not? Prophecies, we don't watch prophecies. We are not careless about prophecies. Prophecies, we believe them. We receive them first. Because prophecies are like seeds. Until when you plant a seed, the tree in that seed will not emerge. Prophecies are seed. You must receive it into your heart. The book of Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. No matter what you are passing through, no matter what you are going through, the word of God is above your situation. The word of God is above that situation. What you are passing through right now is temporal. Say with me, it is temporal. What you are passing through now has an expiry date. It has an expiry date. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Second Corinthians 4, 18. What you are passing through right now, it has an expiry date. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? They are temporal. What you are passing through concerning your head is temporal. What you are passing through, those challenges concerning your business, concerning your career, they are temporal. And it won't further. But the things which are not seen are what? They are eternal. God's plan for you, they are good, not of evil. God's plan for you, they are good, not of evil. Whatever you are passing through right now, all you need to do is to settle down with the word of God. As you settle down with the word of God, put it to work. Put it to work. For instance, now, during Shiloh, there are a lot of prophecies that has gone ahead of us. The prophecies of, of covenant of success, of fruitfulness, of exemption, a lot has gone ahead of us. What you need to do is to locate the one that is in line with your own challenge and roll with it. What you need to do is to work, is to settle with it and begin to work with it and begin to roll with it. How do you roll with it? You roll with it in praises. You roll with it in praises. John chapter 1 verse 14. I'll show you something very amazing there. John 1 14. The Bible there is speaking. It says that the word became flesh. The word of God became flesh. The word of God became flesh. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Let's read together. One to go, church. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you very much. The word of God there became reality. It became flesh. It became tangible. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can touch it. The word of God. It became flesh. It means that you can, any word of God you locate in the scriptures, you can praise them into reality. Any word of God you can see in the scriptures. That's why the Bible said, as far as your eyes can see, it shall be given unto you. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. As far as your eyes can see, anything you can see from Genesis down to Malachi, anything you can see from Matthew down to Revelation, it shall be given unto you. But all you need to do is to, work, is to dance them into reality. The word became flesh. The word became reality. For instance, a brother that is believing God for, for, for a wife, and maybe you have 
saying the sister you are talking to her, she was, she's not complying. She's not concurring. What you need to do is to take her picture and dance. Lord, I give you praise because she's mine. <laughs> it is not good for a man to be alone, Lord. Lord, touch her. Minister to her. Let the Holy Ghost touch her. You dance it into reality. Dance it into reality. Concerning the fruit of the womb, dance it into reality. Concerning your academics, dance it into reality. Because the Bible said an excellent spirit was found in Daniel. And he, was, he became ten times better than his mate. He can become ten times better. David was speaking, he said that I know better than my teachers. You can dance yourself. Look, dance the word of God. The word of God became flesh. The word of God became real. The word of God became what? It became real. You are redeemed of the Lord. You are special in the sight of God. You have all it takes to make it in life. Don't settle for where you are. Where you are right now is only good for now. Where you are right now is only good for now. Where you are right now is someone else's prayer point. So you need to move, vacate that place, vacate that position where you are, and begin to move forward. Stop giving excuses because of where I am, because of the country I am. No! 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 Psalms 24 verse 1 says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God your Father is the landlord of the earth. So why are you complaining? As a child of a landlord, a child of a landlord cannot be begging. A child of a landlord cannot be intimidated. No! No! I believe someone is catching something new this morning. Quickly with the time we have, let's quickly look at some prophetic lifeline for the redeemed. I know during the month of September, we had the month as our month of praise. But again, God is giving us another signal that this month again is our month of praise. Why? Because I know that God is not done with us yet. God wants to give us extra blessings. He wants to make sure that every prophetic word for us for 2022 comes to pass. That they will not be carried over. That's why he's giving us this signal to give him praise. And as you give him praise, I see God turning things around for you in the name of Jesus Christ. If God can create heaven and earth in six days, he made man, a full-grown man in one day. Your case is just too small for God to handle. 13 days is too much for God to turn things around. All you need to do is to plug into this mystery of praise. Give him glory and you will see God stepping in. And if God steps in, all your enemies will step out. If God takes over, your case is settled already. Because one with God is majority. And if God be for us, who can be against us? All you need to do is to plug in this weapon of praise. And as you do that, I see God turning your story around in the name of Jesus Christ. Before this year is over, you shall have a surprise visitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's look at some prof I mean, scriptural prophetic life life for the redeemed. Number one is that you have a glorious destiny. Say with me, I have a glorious destiny. Bible speaking to us in the book of Romans chapter 8, from verse 29 to 30. Romans 8, 29 to 30. For whom he did for known, he also did predestinate to be conformed to, be, to the image of his son, that he might be the first song among many brethren. And verse 30 now. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also what? He also glorified. You have a glorious destiny. Not a shameful one. Not a pitiable one. As a covenant child of God, you have a glorious destiny. Whereby men and women will be envying you. Talking about Isaac, 
in Genesis chapter 26. The Bible says a whole nation envied him because of the hand of God upon his life. Yes, you may not be looking like it right now. You are work in progress for God. You are under construction. Don't close the don't close your case. No. No. It's too early. Don't close it. Until God says it is over, it is not over yet. Until God says it is over, it is not over yet. A living dog is better than a dead lion. You have a glorious destiny. Anything that is contesting with your destiny, that is sitting on your destiny, I stand in the shoes of my father this morning. I decree by the anointing that is backing this commission, I decree end to that oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone sitting on your destiny, they are all seated right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, number two, you have a wealthy destiny. I like this. You have a wealthy destiny. A wealthy destiny. Not a poor destiny, but a wealthy destiny. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Second Corinthians 8 and 9. For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty may be what? May be rich. You have a wealthy destiny. Christ has paid the price already. People of God, Christ did not pay only for our salvation. He has also paid as well for our well-being to be wealthy. Yes, he has saved you. He has redeemed you. But he has redeemed you for anything that is not bringing glory to God. He has redeemed you from sickness because sickness is an oppression. He has redeemed you from poverty. No one wants to identify with poverty. Do you have a witness in the house? Huh? Have you had someone come into the altar to share testimony that, praise the Lord, I'm poor? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not a testimony. That is why Christ has to pay for your price for you to be wealthy, to be prosperous. And not only that, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, if wealth, prosperity is not good, God will not empower you to be wealthy. It's a good thing to be wealthy, isn't it? But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. The covenant he had with Abraham, that he may establish it. The covenant he had with Abraham is that in blessing, I will bless you. In blessing, other nations of the earth shall be blessed. So you must drop that mentality of poverty. You must drop that mentality that because of righteousness, then what? Then you embrace poverty. No, it doesn't work that way. The Bible says that heaven is paved with gold. But this morning, I see God empowering someone to get more wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that by today's encounter, God will make you like a sea that will be distributing to the rivers in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what sea is, isn't it? Uh, sea, sea is, is full of water, isn't it? So it distributes to rivers. So it means that God will make you a mega prosperous person to the point that you will be distributing. Because that's what God has called us to do. That we should be a blessing to others. Not to consume, not to be a consumer, but to be a distributor. I decree that that will be a portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, you have a real destiny. Say it, may I have a real destiny? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. 
All right, and let's jump to First Peter, please. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. First Peter two nine. First Peter two nine. Let's read that first. One two. Let's read together as a church. One to go. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. Into his marvelous light. You have a royal destiny. Say with me, I have a royal destiny. So you are not an honorary person. You are not a casual person. Royal people, they carry themselves. There's a way they carry themselves. They don't behave anyhow. They don't eat what other people are eating. They are special people. The same thing you and I. We are redeemed as royal people. We are chosen people. So, you must drop all those wrong mentality. See yourself as a king, as a queen. Every prophetic word concerning you, I decree that they will come to pass with speed in the name of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is to believe them. Receive them into your heart and walk with them. Put them to work. Put them to work. Put them to work. And as you do that, I see God bringing them to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. You have a destiny of health and wholeness. You have a destiny of health and wholeness. Second John, third John, please, too. Third John to be, be love. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. You have a destiny of health and wholeness. Anyone sick here, I decree that that spirit behind that sickness is arrested and destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree by the power of God Almighty, you are going from health to health in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going from health to health in the name of Jesus Christ. The next point is that you are redeemed to enjoy a good old age. To enjoy a good old age. That means that no one here is permitted to die on timely death. No one here is permitted to die before their time. It's good old age. We can see the account in Genesis chapter 25, verse 8, talking about Abraham there. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. And as a redeemed child of God Almighty, you and I, we are, what? We are connected to Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, from verse 13 to 14. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of law. Be made a cause for us. As it is written, cause is everyone that what? Now hang it on the tree. Then the next verse. That the blessings of Abraham might what? Might come upon Lord the Gentiles through Christ. And one of the blessings is good old age. Good old age. The Bible says that a child will die at 100. A child will die at 100. So it means that no one is permitted to die before 100. No one is permitted. We have given ourselves a benchmark. It's 120. I thought there was a believer in the house this morning. Yeah. It's 120. So even if by mistake you want to go before 100, uh, by God's grace I'll come and say, no, you are not going yet. That's not our agreement. That's not our covenant. Wake, wake up. And I decree by the power of God Almighty that you shall live the number of your days in the name of Jesus Christ. These are just the prophetic, the scriptural prophecies that we can search out for us. But the Bible is loaded with a lot of prophecies that concern you and I. All you need to do is to locate the one that relates to you and what? And receive it. Believe it. And put it to work. And as you are putting it to work, you are giving glory to God. You are praising God. Why? Well, because you are preparing the stage for God to manifest. You are preparing the stage for God to what? To confirm his word. Because his word will not fall to the ground. Amen.
In addition, we must continue to water the seed of the prophetic word. We must continue to water the seed of the prophetic word in our good heart with praise so as to what to bring forth fruit. The truth is this, that no matter how good a soil may be, if you plant a seed without watering it, that seed will not bring forth. The same way, spiritually, as you receive the word of God in your heart, you believe it. You must keep watering it. Keep watering it. Water there is praise. Water there is praise. That's why very soon we'll be going into a session of praise. Those prophetic words which you have received that are yet to come to pass, you praise yourself into reality. You praise to make sure that those prophecies they come to pass. And I decree concerning you, there shall be no carryover of any prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hand shall be what? Shall be rendered unto him. And Proverbs 13, 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the transgressors shall what? Shall eat violence. So, what the scriptures is trying to tell us is that any prophecy that is yet to come to pass, don't give up on it yet. Don't go about complaining about it. Because some people, what they do is that when they hear other people sharing their testimonies, that's when they go back home, they begin to say, God, why me? When am I going to share my testimony? Other people are testifying, when am I going to share my testimony? By doing that, you are complaining indirectly. You are complaining indirectly. Rather, as you see people, other people sharing their testimony, celebrate with them. As you are celebrating, say, Lord, I know that I shall be the next. Stop asking God why. If you are asking God why, you become a question mark yourself among men. Rather, appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. There was a woman that gave birth to six children. She testified during Shiloh. No fallopian too. They brought forth. There was even another one that conceived and the devil tried to want to block her away. For four years she had the pregnancy. She carried pregnancy for four years. At the end, God stepped in. I don't know what you are trusting God for. I don't know what prophecies that has gone ahead that are yet to come to pass. But as you give him praise, I see God stepping in. And all those enemies will be checked out in the name of Jesus Christ. All those enemies, they will be checked out in the name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to round up the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12 to 19. Hebrews 3, 12, I mean, 17 to 19. Hebrews 3, 17 to 19. The book of, no, sorry, please, can we go to Habakkuk, please? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. It's in Old Testament. Habakkuk. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. Yeah, this may not be working. This may not be going in your way. Look at it. The way that scripture painted that picture. And the feet shall not yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no heart in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then the Lord shall, the Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. I thought someone was saying amen to that. To the chief singer on my stringed instruments, no matter what you are passing through, other people have passed through it and they have come out. So I know that you, are, you will be the next to come out. That testimony you are trusting God for, other people they have testified this, you shall be the next in the name of Jesus Christ. But what do you need to do? Don't complain. Don't let the happiness to determine your future. Don't let the happiness to take your joy away. The scriptures there said, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then afterwards, then he will make my feet like hands feet. Then not only that, then I will begin to walk upon my high places. We have been anointed 
to begin to run on our high places so you must trust god believe god and one way to do that is that you must be joyful you must be joyful because every prophetic word we see and believe it ignites hope it ignites hope inside of us romans 4 18 romans 4 18 talking about uh, 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 abraham who against hope who against hope he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be so for me to know that yes you believe and you receive the word of god it will show in your face talking about hannah the bible says that after she prayed her countenance changed then the next following shiloh she returned with her samuel i pray that this time next year god will multiply you in the name of jesus christ concerning those desires that are yet to come to pass by the mighty hand of god as we engage the hand of god in praises i see god bringing them to pass with speed in the name of jesus christ every prophetic word receive and believe it stimulates joy and rejoicing it stimulates joy and rejoicing the book of jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 jeremiah 15 16 thy words were found and i did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart until you receive the word of god with joy god cannot manifest and until you are joyful you cannot be praiseful i believe someone is ready to praise god this morning i believe someone is ready to praise god this morning I see God turning every ugly situation around for better in the name of Jesus Christ. So we must expect all the prophetic words that are released at Shiloh to come true in our lives as we maintain a vibrant attitude of praise as Abraham did. I would like you to put your hands together for Jesus. God cannot lie every word of god that has gone ahead of us i see them coming to pass in your life in the name of jesus christ the word of god became flesh it became flesh it became flesh every word of god you are believing you are trusting god for that is hanging out there i decree by the power of the word of god that it shall become real for you in the name of jesus christ i would like you to go ahead and appreciate god and thank him for his word go ahead give him praise give him glory give him honor give him adoration for his word we have received again this morning celebrate him magnify him bless uh, be your holy name lord for in jesus mighty name we have prayed then so we'll be going into a section of high praise all i close or head bow all i close or head bow not all praises that is acceptable before god some praises they are noise unto god some praises they are noise unto god if you are in this service you have not yet born again I would like you to indicate by raising up your hand and I will pray with you. Where you are seated, I would like you to raise up your hand or stand up where you are, please. If you are in this service, you have not yet surrendered your life. I would like you to stand to your feet and I will pray with you. Jesus Christ loves you. He wants to open a new door for you. That your praise will be acceptable this morning as we go into a session of high praise this morning. If you know that your relationship with Jesus is not intact, I would like you to rise to your feet and I'll pray with you. Or you want to rededicate your life. Maybe some times ago you gave your life to Christ and something happened. And you know that there's a disconnection. And you want to make amendment this morning. I would like you to rise to your feet and I'll pray with you. Jesus Christ speaking, he said, If you are ashamed of me before my father, I also will be ashamed of you before my father if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father church attendance is not equal to be born again you can be born in the church and yet not be connected until you are connected to christ you cannot collect your allocation if you are in this service you have not, you have not yet surrendered your life this is an opportunity for you christ is knocking at the door of your heart don't allow satan to keep you sitting rise up to your feet and i'll pray with you if there's no one, please let's rise to our feet right now and begin to receive fresh garment of praise. That Lord, as I enter into a session of praise, I receive fresh garment of praise. I receive fresh garment of praise. I receive fresh garment of praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive fresh garment of praise. Go ahead and receive fresh garment of praise. 
Blessed be your holy name, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please.